Hey guys, welcome back to day 15. We're diving into Bronsted, Lowry, Acids, and Bases. Recap real quick. We have definition of an acid in Bronsted, Lowry, which of course is a proton or H plus donor. And a base is the H plus or proton acceptor. Let's talk about the relative strengths of acids and bases. First, we know that strong acids dissociate completely. This is because, as we know, K, the equilibrium constant, K, and we're going to put A for acid, is large. Same thing with B, though. KB, strong base, K is large as well. But most of our strong bases at this point have been soluble ionic compounds, and so they don't really have an equilibrium constant. They just dissociate in water. Two, weak acids dissociate partially and that is because K is small, Ka or Kb, which we'll dive into soon, and three, Non-acids and non-bases dissociate negligibly. Because K is very, very small. The next thing we want to talk about is the leveling effect. So the leveling effect has to do with hydronium, which is the solvent cation and hydroxide which is the solvent anion are the strongest possible acid and base that can exist in water. All strong acids and bases are what we're going to call leveled to hydronium and hydroxide. Now, when we talk about this leveling effect, it means hydrochloric acid, H2O, HCl, hydrochloric acid, HCl, is too strong of an acid to just stay in water. The, their equilibrium constant is too big, and H and Cl split apart, and we make hydronium. And chloride, not HCl together. That's what the leveling effect talks about. With Bronsted Lowry acids and bases, not everything's strong. A lot of them are weak. And there is a key point here with Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. And that is 
in every acid base equilibrium the equilibrium favors transfer of the proton from the stronger acid to the stronger base to form the weaker acid and the weaker base. And so that what I'm saying is that the equilibrium favors or lies on the weaker side. And that kind of makes sense because K is small, the reaction goes less towards completion. Where K is larger, K goes more towards completion. So if I have a stronger acid, and a stronger base, we have a weaker acid, and a weaker base, What we're saying is the proton goes there, and we're going to have more of these guys in solution and less of the stronger acid and the stronger base in solution. All of them will be there, but not all of them will be, they're not all present at the same level. There's going to be more weaker acid and weaker base than stronger acid and stronger base. So here are the relative strengths that we're talking about. Get them out a little bit. There we go. So on the left-hand side, acid strength, strong acid versus non-acid. Non base versus strong base. As you can see, the three strong bases are hydroxide, sulfide, oxide. Strong acids, there's a few of them. Neutral bases versus, now everything else in this like light purple, from water down to phosphate, water up to hydrogen sulfite, excuse me, that's hydrogen sulfate. All those are acids and bases, and they're weak. So they can behave, all these are acids on the left, and all those are bases on the right. They all undergo the chemistry. Whereas chloride's not going to accept an H+. Chloride is just going to float around, and it's not going to accept an H+, from water. It's not going to accept an H+, from almost anything. Conversely, hydroxide is not going to donate an H. These guys in the middle can. Now we can quantify some of these and here's some monoprotic acids. And I would recommend using these values. See these K values here? Ka for acids. I would use these values because some of these like for example HCN. I have I can pull out three different textbooks in my office that have three different values for Ka for HCN. Uh, our, our book, the book might actually have two values for Ka for HF 
use this one. I think the other one is 3.5 times 10 negative 4. That will be wrong on Pearson, even though it's in the book. Hopefully they change it in the next edition. So use these KA values, because these are not all from what we call the CRC handbook. The handbook that has all the constants and stuff that chemists use. These are sometimes measured, sometimes a little different on purpose, so that you can go just Google, like, oh yeah, it's, it's this number, and you guys Google problems sometimes, and you get the wrong answer, like, ha, oh, you didn't use the book, you just typed in the search engine, do you even know how to do it? That's why they do that. So we don't want to do that. You guys, we want you to get the right answer and use the data provided. Right, let's talk about calculations now. There are two types of pH calculations. So when we talk about pH calculations, they're strong and weak. And we'll learn that strong, we're pretty much going to have a happy face, and weak, it's more involved. That's how it works. So again, strong, we know we have a large Ka or Kb. So acid constant, base constant. And we get 100% dissociation for strong. That means the concentration of acid equals the concentration of H3O plus if it's monoprotic. And all the all but sulfuric acid is that way. So for example, 0 0.10 molar hydroiodic acid. We know HI aqueous plus water. We're gonna go a hundred percent to H3O plus and I minus. So if we were to do an ice table, I would start with 0 0.10 molar, none and none, minus 0 0.10 molar, plus 0 0.10 molar, plus 0 0.10 molar, no HI, 0 0.10 molar hydronium, and 0 0.10 molar iodide. We don't care about that, so the pH is negative log of 0 0.10, so the pH is 1.0. Straightforward. Bases are a little bit different. So if I had another example, NaOH, let's say 0.1 molar again. We know that NaOH aqueous is going to dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. And so you can do the same ice table if you'd like, where we got 0 0.10 molar, none and none, minus 0 0.10 molar, plus 0 0.10, plus 0 0.10. So at equilibrium, I have no starting material, but I have 0 0.10 molar sodium ion and 0 0.10 molar hydroxide. If I want the pH, I cannot just take the negative log of 0.1, because that would be the pOH is the negative log of hydroxide. So you either have to figure out the pH and subtract 14 p, right? pH plus pOH is 14, or you got to find the hydronium ion concentration and then do the and figure out the pH from the hydronium ion concentration. Most of my students have done 14 minus PA or POH is the pH. So in this case, 14, then you do minus, and then your calculator hit negative log, 0 0.1 equals the pH. So in this case, the pH is 13, because the log of 0.1 is 1. So 14. Minus pH, minus pOH is 13. So that works out. Strong, pretty straightforward. Weak, a little bit different. 
Weak is a little bit different. So weak, we have to use the ice tables and Ka or Kb. What do I mean? Well, let's, I'm going to scoot down on the page and, and show you. So if I have a generic weak acid, HA. Now, what do you mean by that? Does it matter what HA is? I'm going to scroll back up to all these. This can be HA. This could be HA. It's monoprotic HA. All you need to know that it's monoprotic and you need to know the K value. HA. In fact, some of these, it's shorter to write that. So the generic acid HA would be HA aqueous plus water in equilibrium with hydronium and the conjugate base. So we got to use the ice table and Ka is going to be equal to the hydronium ion concentration, your conjugate base all over concentration of HA, the weak acid. All right, and pH is negative log of hydronium. And we got to use the ice table. So we use the ice table. However, for the generic base B, Let's say weak base B. You have B, base B, weak base B aqueous plus water going to BH plus because base is a proton acceptor and OH minus a proton donor. KB. equals the concentration of BH plus OH minus all over base B. So now the pH will equal 14 minus the negative log concentration of B. And again, we have to use an ice table. And bad news, you use ice tables every chapter from now on. At least there's always going to be one problem where you can use an ice table. Yay. But there's a important thing I want to point out. Ka is always going to have this guy. And Kb will always have that guy. So Ka's have hydroniums. Kb's have hydroxides. That's very, very good for identifying what, we, what I have. And so to recap, okay, generic weak acid, HA, KA, always has hydronium, pH, negative log of hydronium. In this case, hydronium is X. When you do the ice table, hydronium is X. When I do the ice table for the generic base B, it's the same except for X is equal to the hydroxide concentration. And that's why we have to do a little bit different with the pH. The next thing I want to talk about is the relationship between Ka and Kb. So let's use an example. Easy example to use is AHF, hydrofluoric acid, where Ka happens to be 6.8 times 10 to negative 4. Well, the weak acid equilibrium, AHF aqueous plus H2O liquid going to H3O plus aqueous and F minus aqueous. So if you look, if I scroll back up to probably not the same page, but if I just subtrude, subtrude, substitute out A for F and then F minus, it's the same as the generic. So that's why we use the generic a lot. And Ka, of course, is equal to the concentration of hydronium 
fluoride all over HF. And there's Ka. If we flip this reaction, F minus aqueous plus hydronium, we get HF and water. Well, this K is not a Ka, but this K happens to be the inverse H3O plus and F minus. So it's not a Ka. I wrote down A. I'm sorry. It's not a Ka. It's a K. It happens to be Ka to negative 1 or 1 over 6.8 times 10 to negative 4. And I'm kind of out of room there, but it's about 1,500. Larger than 1. That kind of makes sense. If we look at our weak acid, we're going to have more HF and water, of course, but more HF in solution than hydronium and fluoride. If we flip the reaction, look at it from the other direction, the fluoride and hydronium are going to react more to make more HF because you get stronger base, stronger acid, weaker acid, weaker base. Equilibrium is going to lie on the weaker side. Can we get a KB for F though? Because I just called this a this fluoride a weak base. Or actually, it's a stronger base than water. How do I know it's stronger base than water? Well, we can quantify things with a KB. So does F minus have a KB? F minus aqueous plus water. So notice there's a difference here. I'm having fluoride react with water. I had my weak acid react with water. Now I'm having my conjugate base react with water, and it's going to produce HF, the hydrofluoric acid, and hydroxide. This is KB, which is equal to HF, hydroxide, all over fluoride. What's its value? I don't know. Well, here's the relationship between Ka and Kb. Ka and Kb. Ka, if we write it down, was hydronium concentration times the fluoride concentration all over our weak acid, hydrofluoric acid. Kb was hydrogen fluoride times our hydroxide concentration all over our fluoride concentration. And you might already see the relationship. If I take Ka and I multiply them by Kb, what do we get? Well, the fluorides cancel, the hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid cancel, and I'm left with hydronium multiplied by hydroxide, which happens to be Kw. So Ka times Kb is Kw, which of course is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius. So Ka times Kb is Kw. And that's very important. So in this case, what is Kb for F minus? So Kb for F minus would be equal to, so Ka times Kb is Kw. So Kb would be Kw 1.0 times 10 to negative 14th, divided by Ka, 6.8 times 10 to negative 4, which happens to be 1.5 times 10 to negative 11. Pretty weak, pretty small, but it's still a value, it's still measurable. So there's Ka times Kb, and the relationship between Ka and Kb. An example, determine the hydronium ion concentration and the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of formic acid. Well, what's formic acid? I don't know, but it's a 
mon weak monoprotic acid, we could go look it up and we find that it's actually HCOOH. It's the simplest carboxylic acid. One proton comes off. It's this proton right here on the COOH. And a lot of times we write it CHC double bond O, single bond O, H. And this is the H that comes off of the carboxylic acid. This one. So we don't know, let's just say HA plus water going to hydronium and HCO. Well, we just don't know. I said we don't know, but I'm writing it out. A minus. If you want to write the whole compound out, you can. The other thing we need to find out, we have to look up, in this case, is Ka. And that's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. You can look it up if we go back to, where's formic? There's a CD. There's formic acid right there. HCHO2. That tells you right there. Ice table. I C E. We know we start with a 0.2 molar. 0 0.200 molar. None. Don't care. Minus X plus X plus X. So I get 0 0.200 molar minus X, X, and X molar. We know Ka is equal to hydronium conjugate base all over HA, a weak acid. So 1.8 times 10 to negative 4 equals x times x or x squared all over 0 0.2 times um, minus x. 0 0.200 minus x. Can I approximate here? I would say so. We are right on the verge because this is a thousand times different, or 10 to the third different. 0.2 is negative first. This is 10 to 2 times 10 to, yeah, 2 times 10 to negative 1. And this is 2 times 10 to negative 4. So 2 times 10 to negative 1 and 2 times 10 to negative 4, that's three times different. So we can do it. So if I approximate, this is equal to about 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 equals x squared all over 0 0.2. Or 3.6 times 10 to the negative 5 equals x squared. Take the square root. x happens to be 0 0.0060. x happens to be our hydronium concentration, so our pH, that's hydronium, let me write that out, is negative log of 0 0.0060. So our pH is 2.22. And that's this example. Number 70, we have 0.115 molar solution of a weak acid as a pH of 3.29. Calculate the acid ionization constant, Ka, for the acid. So pH gives me what? This pH gives me H3O plus concentration. So let's write out the weak acid HA. I have HA, aqueous, plus water going to hydronium and the conjugate base. My ice table, I know the initial concentration of HA is 0 0.115 molar. Don't care about the water, no hydronium, and no conjugate base. We know that it's a one to one to one 
to one molar solution. We don't know what K is because that's what we're going to calculate. Calculate Ka. That's what we're doing. Calculating equilibrium constant. And of course, we know Ka is equal to hydronium concentration, conjugate base, all over the weak acid concentration, Ha. Okay, so what is X? Because if I'm looking for Ka, I can't have X there either. Well, the pH at equilibrium, right, and this is, of course, at equilibrium. So if I know the pH, the concentration of H3O plus happens to be 10 to the negative pH, or in this case, 10 to the negative 3.29. So the concentration of hydronium in this example looks like it's 5.13 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. And so minus 5.13 times 10 to the negative 4 plus 5.13 times 10 to the negative 4. And it's a 1 to 1 ratio plus 5.13 times 10 to the negative 4. So that means I can do the math here. And get 0 0.1144 molar HA, 5.13 times 10 to the minus 4, and 5.13 times 10 to the minus 4. That means Ka will equal 5.13 times 10 to the minus 4 squared all over 0 0.1144, which is too many big figs, but that's okay. Because we'll get 2.3 times 10 to negative 6 for Ka. And that's how we take care of number 70. Next one's 94. And 94 is very, very similar to one we just did. Except it's a little bit different. And the reason is we are going to determine Kb for the base. So we have a generic weak base B. Let's just call it the weak base. Let's just call it... B. So B, aqueous, plus water, goes to, well, base is a proton acceptor, BH plus aqueous, and OH minus. Because usually, in fact, always in our case, we will have KB will have an OH minus. So we know K, capital KB, is equal to the concentration of BH plus our conjugate acid hydroxide over our base B. We're going to calculate KB. So we're searching for this, that number. We have a pH here. pH here is the power of hydrogen. And right, pH is the negative log of H3O plus or H plus. So we don't want that. We want hydroxide. We need hydroxide because if I start my ice table, we have 0 0.135 molar, and that's all I know. We have to do a change, and I have to get the concentration of hydroxide. The pH plus the pOH is 14, if we remember that. So that means the pOH would be 14 minus the pH. So that means the pOH looks like it's 2.77, if we do that math correctly. So that means the hydroxide concentration is equal to 10 to the negative 2.77, 10 to the negative pH. So that means my equilibrium hydroxide concentration would be 0 0.0017. So minus 0 0.0017 plus 0 0.0017 plus 0 0.0017. And again, why? Because it's 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 mole ratio. So that means at equilibrium, I have 0 0.133 molar base 
0.0017 molar conjugate acid and 0.0017 molar hydroxide. Plug it in. KB would equal 0.0017 molar times 0.0017 molar, so, or square it, over 0.133 molar. So I get KB to be 2.2 times 10 to negative 5. Last one, guys, 97. Determine the hydroxide and pH. So that's important because we're going to determine hydroxide and the pH of a 0.14 molar fluoride solution. Well, if I go to the back of the book, there are KB values in the back of the book. I'm not going to find fluoride back there. Why not? Well, fluoride is a conjugate base. We don't find the conjugates. We only find the acids or the bases, not the conjugate acids or the conjugate bases. So it comes from HF. And HF has a Ka of 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. My question then is, how do I get Kb for F minus? We need Kb because I have F minus aqueous plus H2O liquid going to HF plus OH minus. Well, if we remember, KB, our KB expression would be HF hydroxide all over fluoride. And if we remember KA multiplied by KB equals KW. So in this case, KB is KW over KA, which happens to be 1.0 times 10 to negative 14th divided by 6.8 times 10 to negative 4. So KB will be, I think, 1.5 times 10 to negative 11. Wonderful. So now we do an ice table. So what we just did is the trick for this. So we have 0 0.140 molar fluoride change. It's all one to one. So at equilibrium, I have 0 0.140 molar minus x, x and x. Plug into my KB expression. And KB was 1.5 times 10 to negative 11 equals, looks like it's going to be x squared all over 0 0.140 minus x. Can I approximate here? Well, 0.1 is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 1. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11. It's 10 to the 10th different. 10 to the 10th. 10 billion times bigger than k. So yes, we can approximate this to 0. Makes it nice. 1.5 times 10 to negative 11 equals x squared over 0 0.140, which means I get two. I get about 2.1 times 10 to negative 12 equals x squared. X I get, and x again is OH minus. I get. 1.45 times 10 to negative 6 molar. So that's OH minus. Check. pH is 14 minus the pOH. So pH is 14 minus the negative log 
of x, 1.45 times 10 to the minus 6. So the pH I got is 8.2. And that's how we do problem number 97. Now there's one more problem on this page, 114. We did not yet cover polyprotic acids because you can see there's two um, H's there in front of carbonate. So we're not going to do that one. So that's going to be it. So this is the last one we're going to do. Hopefully that works. Everybody have a good one. Take care.